Good morning. How's everybody? Good. Any advance on good? Great. Any advance on great? Anybody blessed? Blessed. Amen. Well, it's a real joy for me to be um, this side of the creek, as they say. I'm a Kiwi, if you haven't guessed that already. So uh, being this side of the creek, um, over here with you Aussies, um, it's a joy to be here. But I know we've got some Kiwis here too, haven't we? There's some Kiwis here somewhere. Yeah, Kiwis, praise God. Where's Jason? Is he here? Hey? Oh, I'm our children's church. Okay. Anyway, yeah, so it's a joy to be here with you. Um, I was with these guys a few years back when you were in the, um, what was the other building? The university? Yeah, the community. Yeah, okay, so back there in those days. And um, as, as um, Pastor Chris has said, we did some time together in uh, Myanmar and Burma in November. And uh, we're going to do some time again this November in Burma. Praise God. Um, so I came to uh, meet your pastors through ICFM. Um, and so that's where we met. And really it was um, Pastor Jill that came and introduced herself to me being a Kiwi. She came up to speak to me being a Kiwi, and that's kind of where we met and um, where our fellowship began at ICFM. Um, you, you, I really, really um, uh, appreciate them and value the friendship that we, we have um, developing and growing together, and um, I really like your pastors. Um, I'm not a novice. I'm on my way to being a veteran, but I like them because they're clean. They're clean. I like them for that reason, among other reasons. Now, you wouldn't have to be a um, rocket scientist to figure out that um, I, I have some Scottish in my background. Scottish heritage. Anybody else? Scottish heritage. Okay, we're in good company. So, I was telling the guys... Um, at the men's breakfast yesterday that Dr. David Livingstone, one of my heroes in the faith, and uh, we actually share the same birthday, Dr. Livingstone and I. I found that out more recently, but I have a quote from Dr. Livingstone in the front of my Bible. He says, if a commission by an earthly king is considered an honour, how can a commission by a heavenly king be considered a sacrifice? Anybody like that? If a commission by an earthly king is considered an honour, how can a commission by a heavenly king be considered a sacrifice? The sacrifice of being a believer, the sacrifice of being called into ministry, come on. If it's to the king or the queen of England, it's considered an honour. What's, what's up? Hmm? Here's one of my favourites. This is an old Scottish proverb for you Scottish folk. I think this is really cool. If you don't have blood on your kilt, then you're just a dancer. <laughs> that good? <laughs> if you don't have blood on your kilt, then you're just a dancer. I think that's really, really clever. Um, any Irish folk in here? You've got to do your own growing, no matter how tall your grandfather is. That's an old Irish proverb. Isn't that true? You've got to do your own growing, no matter how tall your grandfather is. So anyway, it's great to be here and to have the opportunity to um, break the bread of life with you this morning. Um, I want to just tell you a little story that happened in my life um, from which will come very practical wisdom. Um, I know that you're well taught here. I know that um, your pastor has a wonderful teaching gift, so I'm not here to try and bring some... Um, powerful revelation. What I'll bring this morning is very simple. It's kind of like a um, make an adjustment morning or make an adjustment message. Uh, in 1996, the church that we were pastoring, we received a very unusual request from outside to our local church family. Uh, we were asked to assist uh, the Bible Society in the South Pacific really at the time had been given or donated a 51-foot ketch. Now, for those of you that are not familiar, a ketch is a twin-mastered yacht. So 
a airline pilot with Cathay Pacific felt that, in his language, the man upstairs, in his language, wanted him to donate his yacht to missions purposes in the South Pacific, so donated this 51-foot catch to the Bible Society in the South Pacific. So, what a wonderful gift. Amen? Now we have a problem. How do we shift that baby from Hong Kong down to the, at the time, the Solomon Islands? Three and a half thousand nautical miles coming down through the South China Sea, down through the Philippines, Mindanao, across below Guam, uh, New Britain, New Ireland, Papua New Guinea, and down to um, Solomon Islands. How do we shift that thing? So our church was contacted, can you please provide three crew? I don't know about you, but I think that's an unusual request <laughs> of a local church, right? So they had an American skipper and his wife who was uh, experienced in international waters. They picked up a YWAMA, youth with a mission from um, the Solomon Islands, who was a diesel mechanic to look after the diesel, and they wanted three crew to help bring this catch through. And so three from my church went, I being one of the three. I believe in leading from the front. I would not ask my men to do something that I was not prepared to do myself. So I was on board that boat. Now, um, as we journeyed through, we were on two-hour watches. Anybody done any international waters? Anybody here? International waters? Nobody. Okay, so we were on two-hour watches. Captain had us all sorted out, two-hour watches, and um, when we came off watch, right, we came off watch, we had to write our position in the ship's logbook. Now, please understand, this is 1996, so we had no autopilot, no cruise control. We steered to a position on the compass, okay? So... Uh, we had to write our position in the ship's logbook. We had to detail whether it was calm, wind conditions, that type of thing. Did we see anything different? Write that in the logbook. And then every day uh, on the big table in the ship's galley, the captain had a ocean chart. And he would draw our, our trail from Hong Kong, plot that thing. We could see exactly where we were. He would draw that every day. Take our details from the logbook and draw that line where we were. Now, here's the thing. Regularly, we had to make small course adjustments. Regularly. We were steering to a position on a compass, but with wind, with current, with just tired human beings, not concentrating, a whole uh, multitude of factors, we would find that we would be getting off course a little bit. Okay. The current being a big issue. Um, uh, we had about a week where we doubled our speed, and that was due to the current. Then we had other times when we halved our speed, and that was due to an opposing current. So you can imagine, we're like more than four days from land in any direction. You can't steer to the horizon. So the captain would continually make small course adjustments. And you know what? We arrived in Honiara, Iron Bottom Sound, their harbour is called, with absolute precision. Now, here's the thing. Had we not made those constant course adjustments, we probably would have ended up banging into the west side of Australia up here somewhere, round about by Geraldton. And we would have missed the Solomon Islands altogether. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So our success, the accuracy of our journey, the completion of our mission, depended on making continual, uh, slight course adjustments. And you know what happened? We arrived, bang, precision, bullseye, right in the right harbour. We didn't have to ask, who are you people? Where are you from? What nation is this? We knew exactly where we were. Now listen to me, my brother, my sister, the Christian life is very like that. Very like that. The word of God, when the pastors stand to minister, are calling you to make a slight course adjustment. 
when you have guest ministry in like myself, we're calling to you by the Word of God, by the Spirit of God, to make a little course adjustment. Are you here? God is good. The Holy Spirit is good. He's speaking to us. The Word is speaking to us, leading us, making these little course corrections. Amen? Now, what happens if we don't pay attention, if we don't make these adjustments? As I said, we'd have woken up one morning and looked out and said, what are these icebergs doing? Why are these icebergs here? Listen, the reason would have been we didn't make course corrections. We got ourselves way off course. Now we may be up on the rocks. Are you here? See, the Christian life is very like that. Making little course corrections when the word is being ministered. When we're together, fellowshipping together, somebody shares an insight, something from the word. This is what happened in my life. We make a little course correction. Private joke between you and me. This is very important. Yeah, very important. <laughs> Remember that? Very important. <laughs> A joke between me and Pastor Chris. Remember that? Very important. <laughs> okay, haven't got that out of my system. <laughs> All right, it's a private, it's a private joke. Okay, he'll tell you about it. But um, the Christian life is very like that. Small adjustments, little course corrections. The word that I bring this morning is a little course correction. You know, there's a truth that we know. Talk about scriptural truth, Bible truth. It can be pretty impressive. What we know. You're well taught here, I know that. You know that. Let's have an amen. amen. You're well taught here. There's a truth that we know, but then there's a truth that we know in practice. And sometimes that's not so impressive. Amen? The truth that we know, but then there's the truth that we both know and practice. I want to talk to you about this good Bible word, this good rich Bible word, the word incline. Incline. Everybody say incline. incline. It's a good Bible word. Go to Psalm 119. I will give you a few references. Uh, Psalm 119. The Bible word incline. Now, Old Testament, as you know, of course, is Hebrew. Um, Young and his concordance offers us this meaning for the word incline. He says, stretch out, turn aside, away. So to stretch out, to turn aside, to turn away. That's the meaning that Young offers to this word. So Psalm 119 and verse 36. Here the psalmist says, Incline my heart to your testimonies and not to covetousness. So he's asking God, help me. I need help. Incline my heart to your testimonies. Where do we find God's testimonies? In the Word. Are you here? Where do we find God's testimonies, everybody? In the Word. All right. Um, over to uh, verse 112. <clears throat> Same psalm, verse 112. And we see here again the same word, but this time he's saying, I have inclined. So the first reference, help me, Jesus, I need help to incline my heart. Here now, verse 112, I have inclined my heart to perform your statutes forever to the very end. I've inclined my heart. Now, probably the most well-known scripture would have come to some of you or to come to your mind is Proverbs chapter 4. Proverbs chapter 4. So let's look at that. Probably came to your mind when I mentioned the word incline. Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 20. I'm sure a lot of you will have this marked in your Bible. But he says here, verse 20, My son, give attention to my words, Incline your ear to my sayings. Everybody say, incline your ear. Incline. So there it is again, the third reference. My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. Incline, incline, incline. We got e-Bible, do we? Okay. Go back, go back to verse 20. Can we, can we back up? 
20, what, there it is. And, uh, incline your ear to my sayings. Incline. Good Bible word. So, what are we talking about? Stretch yourself, turn away from, and turn towards my sayings, my testimonies. Stretch yourself, reach for, turn aside to the word. Amen? Yeah. To the word. Okay? Now, some of us, we like to have a picture, we like to have an illustration as to the use of this word. So I'm going to show you where this, is, this word is used in a different setting, but it gives a vivid picture uh, of this word. So the book of Numbers, chapter 22. Book of Numbers, chapter 22. So here's a vivid uh, example of this word in a different context, but yet the same Hebrew word. And so Numbers 22 is talking about prophet Balaam and uh, the situation that arose with the donkey, Numbers 22. I'm sure you know the background of that. So we'll come in at verse 22 of Numbers chapter 22. Then God's anger was aroused because he went, that's the prophet Balaam, and the angel of the Lord took his stand in the way as an adversary against him. And he was riding on his donkey and his two servants were with him. Now the donkey saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way with his drawn sword in his hand. And the donkey, what did the donkey do? We got e-Bible? No, we don't have it. Okay, the donkey turned aside. What's your reference say? The donkey turned aside. Same Hebrew word, the donkey inclined. The donkey turned aside. All right? So the donkey saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way with his drawn sword in his hand. And the donkey turned aside out of the way, and went out into the field. So that's the same Hebrew word, incline your ear. Incli I have inclined my heart to your testimonies. The donkey inclined, the donkey turned aside. So the donkey was on the pathway, or on the roadway, right? On the pathway, on the roadway, and the donkey turned aside and went out into the field. The donkey took a different course. So can you see that this is not, the donkey stood there and had some, Wonderful thoughts and emotions passed through the donkey. No, the donkey took action, right? So this incline is an action word. Are you with me? The donkey took action and the donkey turned aside and went out into the field. Now, isn't it something, this is just, you know, I think this is humorous. You may not, but I think it's, am it's amusing that the donkey had more sense than the prophet. The donkey had more sense than the man of God. I think that's amusing, and, and it's true sometimes today too as well. Anyway, um, so, so there's, a, there's, a, there's a, an illustration, there's a picture just showing you that this is an action word. The donkey actually changed course, stopped the direction he was going, and turned aside. Okay. Now, go to the book of Exodus now, and let me show you this example here, the book of Exodus Chapter 3. How are we doing? Exodus chapter 3. Verse 1. So this is talking about Moses, right? So Exodus chapter 3, first verse. Now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the back of the desert and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire from the midst of a bush. So he looked and behold, the bush was burning with fire, but the bush was not consumed. Then Moses said, I will now turn aside. That's the same Hebrew word, incline your ear, I've inclined my heart, help me Lord to incline. Same Hebrew word. So same Hebrew word for the donkey turned out into the field. Same Hebrew word here, Moses, I will now turn aside. I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush does not burn. So when the Lord saw that he, what's next? Turned aside. Are you with me? Yeah. Follow me? So the Lord saw that he turned aside. Same word. So Moses turned aside and the Lord saw that he turned aside. So church, this is an action word. It's not just emotions, it's not just pleasant thoughts, it's not just an idea, this is turning aside. It's an action word. So Moses turned aside from what he was doing. 
Okay? Now, we've got a little bit of foundation here, a little bit of background here. Listen, listen, listen. When the Lord saw that Moses turned aside. No, I want to see if somebody gets this. When the Lord saw that Moses turned aside. Somebody's got it. The Lord said. When the Lord saw that Moses turned aside. Nothing in the Bible is just filling up space. The writer didn't know what to put, so just filled up a couple of lines there. Everything has meaning and everything has purpose. When the Lord saw that Moses turned aside, then the Lord spoke. Let me put it this way. When did the Lord speak? When Moses turned aside. When Moses turned aside. Are you here? Now, again, I'm not trying to, uh, to, to bring some deep revelation and out-revelate your pastors or anything silly like that. This is just a minor course uh, correction. Time to make an adjustment this morning. See, this will stand you in good stead this week. This will stand you in good stead next week, next year, next decade. If you live to 100, this will still be important to you. When the Lord saw Moses turn aside, then the Lord said. Hmm. Luke chapter 14. Luke chapter 14. Let me show you an example here. Luke chapter 14. A little bit of foundation, a little bit of word here. Here's another example. Luke chapter 14. The setting for this, the background for this, is in the first verse. Okay? So if you went to the first verse, now it happened as he, Jesus, went into the house of one of the rulers of the Pharisees to eat bread on the Sabbath that they watched him closely. There's the background, there's the setting. Now, come down here to verse, verse 16. Then he said to him, A certain man gave a great supper and invited many, and sent his servant at supper time to say to those who were invited, Come, for all things are now ready. Verse 18. But they all with one accord began to make excuses. The first said to him, I bought a piece of ground and I must go and see it. I ask you to have me excused. And another said, I bought five yoke of oxen and I'm going to test them. I ask you to have me excused. Still another said, I have married a wife and therefore I cannot come. So that servant came and reported these things to his master. Then the master of the house being angry said to his servant, go out quickly into the streets and lanes of the city and bring in here the poor and the maimed and the lame and the blind, etc." Now, I understand, like you, that that scripture has an application to the Jews. I understand that. But I'm not talking about that this morning. But listen, get this. These three people, plus a bunch of others, but these three people here that were invited were just plain too occupied, plain too busy, plain too caught up with life, too turn aside. I'll leave the interpretation of the Jewish thing to this man here. He knows more about it than I do. I'll stay with my Scottish <laughs> proverbs. Okay? But the point is that these three people were too preoccupied, they were too caught up, they were too busy, 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 too entangled. They had the invitation. They were legitimately invited. They had a seat. They had a place. It was theirs. They had the invitation, but they were too caught up to take the time to turn aside. Am I right? Come on. Is that, is that interpretation correct? Yeah. And they all came up with these excuses. I mean, what pathetic excuses they were too. Who buys a piece of land without looking at it? You know, I'm a, I'm a farmer by background, okay, oxen. Who buys a tractor without finding out about the tractor? Hmm? So, so let's just update that a little. 
Okay. Um, I've bought some land. Mm. Pastor Colin, my business is expanding. Uh, we're opening a new branch. We've got new things happening in business and new business opportunities. And so uh, I won't be able to be there at the prayer seminar because we've got this new business happening and business growing and business expansion. So I won't be able to be there. Uh, I apologize. I can't come. The new yoke of oxen. Well, Pastor Chris, we bought a new car, actually bought a new jet ski for the family, new jet ski for the children. And so Sunday morning, uh, we won't be there. Uh, we've got family coming over, and so we'll be trying out the new jet ski. Well, I've married a wife. Since when was that an excuse? <laughs> Doesn't this guy here sound just like Adam? <laughs> the woman you gave me? Well, the ladies are smiling. The guys are not looking too sure. <laughs> well, 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 Pastor, I, I won't be able to be there at the worship thing tonight because we've got family coming over. We've got family coming to visit. Family are coming from out of state. So don't count on me. I can't be there. Family. Excuses, 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 excuses. Why you can't turn aside. Hmm? It's getting quiet now. Hallelujah. (coughs) But you know, if you look at our culture, folks are turned aside to sports. They're turned aside to hobbies. They're turned aside to community service groups. Um, when I'm in Auckland, I go um, um, running in a, um, there's a huge big park close to where we stay, an athletic track, I go running there. And you get up there in the morning and here's the, the guys my age, younger than me, here they are, out there on this big park with their toy aircraft. I run past some of them and talk into the aircraft. I mean, this is a toy aircraft. You know, motorised toy aircraft. What are they doing? They're turned aside to their hobbies turned aside to their toy aircraft, turned aside to their toy helicopter. That's quote-unquote normal. We're strange, we're in church. People are turned aside to movies, turned aside to TV. Please don't make the study Tuesday night. My program's on that night. My program (laughs) is on that night. My program. Social media. People are turned aside to social media today. Or is it just New Zealand? You don't have social media here yet in this nation? Hasn't got here yet? Well, when it does get here, you'll find people will be turned aside to it. Does anybody here enjoy satire? Satire, you do? Oh? Eh? Okay, when it's funny. I'm not sure if this is funny or not. But this is 100% my own work. So here's a little bit of satire for you. Okay, I, I rewrote the first few verses of Exodus chapter 3 that we just read a few moments ago about Moses, and flocks of his father-in-law. Okay, try this. Now, Moses kept the flocks of Jethro, his father-in-law, guided by his GPS... Moses led the flock to the back of the desert and came to a place called Horeb, the mountain of God. As was his custom, Moses rose in the cool of the early morning and led the flock out to find fresh pasture for the day. Seeing the flock contented and settled, Moses quickly grabbed some breakfast for himself and then sat down with his iPad to check on his emails answering some emails and deleting others. Moses then logged on to his Facebook page to see the latest postings from all of his friends. Noting his own page needed updating, Moses put up some new photos of the flock now contentedly grazing, several new photos of himself, (laughs) plus a couple more of what he had had for breakfast. (laughs) A news flash from Egyptian news popped up on his screen and he also noted that Zipporah was online wanting to chat. 
Now, out of the corner of his eye, Moses, Moses noticed some unusual movements. Looking up from his iPad, he saw a flame of fire in the midst of a bush, but the bush, strangely enough, was not being consumed. Hmm, thought Moses to himself. Pity it wasn't a bit closer, I'd take a look at that, he said, as his attention and thoughts returned back to his iPad and the game he was playing late last night when he must have fallen asleep. Now, when the Lord looked and saw that Moses did not turn aside from his iPad to see the bush and the fire that burned from its midst, the Lord was greatly grieved. Seconds turned into minutes, the minutes into an hour, when Moses paused for a moment from the game he was playing to look up. But he noticed the bush, that bush. The fire was no longer there. The flame must have gone out. I wonder what that was all about, he thought to himself. And the Lord was grieved and wondered what it was going to take to get Moses' attention and to get him to turn aside. That's a little bit of satire for you. Does it make you think? Mm. Now, turn aside. It's just a little course correction, a little course adjustment. But listen, here's what can happen. Here's what does happen. Here's what will happen. And here's what continues to happen. Now, some of you will have heard exactly this example that I'm going to give. People in the living of their lives, I'm talking about believers, good people, good folks, Rush, 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 rush. Busy, 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 busy. Hurry, 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 hurry. We've got so much on, so much living by the clock, so much scheduled. We've got to fit in work. We've got to fit in hobbies. We've got to fit in games. We've got to fit in social media. We've got to fit in Facebook. We've got to fit in our little games on our phones. We've got to fit all that in. TV, movies. And what happens is, we push God aside. Instead of turning aside, we push God aside. Instead of turning aside, we put God on hold. Now, if you ring up a um, business today or a corporation, a lot of times you get an um, uh, automated answer phone. If you want so-and-so, push one. If you want so-and-so, push two. If you want the CEO, push three. you want heaven, push five. You, know, you get all these push, 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 right? But occasionally you get a, a real person, receptionist, and they might say, would you like to hold? They're on the line right now, would you like to hold? Uh, too many times we put God on hold. Instead of turning aside, we put God aside and we put it on hold. No time for God, no time for the things of God. Uh, God gets sort of hurried left over time in the middle of a compacted day. Who knows what I'm talking about? Okay. Now, here's what happens. There's an intervention, there's an interruption, an accident, fell off the ladder, put my back out. Some kind of an injury, some kind of an accident, heart attack, sickness. And so now we find the individual bed fast, right? Can't ride the new jet ski can't do this, can't do that, can't do all the other things that they've done, and now they're bed fast, right? So I come to visit, Pastor Chris comes to visit, I've read about this in books, I've had this said to me, Pastor, the Lord had to set me aside to get me to listen. The Lord has got me in here because I was just like so busy, busy, didn't have time. Now I can't do anything. Now I'm flat on my back. Now I can't even play with my phone. I can't even do social media no more. And so the Lord's got me here. And now I'm listening. I've heard that so many times. So many times. Anybody else heard that? You've heard that too, Alan? So many times. Okay. 
What's the story? Well, wouldn't turn aside, push God away, push God moments away, wouldn't listen, wouldn't listen. Now you're flat on your back, you can't ride your jet ski. You can't go cruising in your new car. You can't even have a barbecue for your family. They all got to come to you. Now, was that God? We know here that wasn't God. God didn't come up and slap that ladder and so, so it fell off the side of the house and you fell on the ground. We know that's not God. He didn't jump in that other car and steer it into your car, kill all of them just to get your attention. Well, that's not God. We know that. No, you brought that on yourself. You brought that on yourself. What's the story now? God, in his mercy, is hoping that we might listen because he tried to get our attention before, but busy, 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 hurry, 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 we wouldn't turn aside. You listening? And now we're flat on our back. Now we've got tubes in our nose and in our arms. What else can we do but listen? So God comes along in his mercy and grace and says, hey, turn aside. <laughs> I've got something to say to you. You can't go anywhere. You can't start up your jet ski. Nothing you can do. Now that happens, will happen, and will continue to happen with folks. But my recommendation is don't wait for that. Grab the turn aside. Amen? Grab the turn aside. Now let me just show you a little example from Jesus. And then I'll tell you a couple of examples from my life. Tell the person beside you, turn aside. Come on, that was pretty weak. How about we try that again? Turn aside. I don't have to come out there and take your pulse to see if you're alive. Turn aside. Tell him, turn aside. So Mark chapter 6. Mark chapter 6. Now, if we read through Mark chapter 6, you'll see that this was a busy day, a very, very busy ministry, peopled, we say peopled out day for Jesus. Hugely demanding day, Mark chapter 6. Um, John the Baptist had been beheaded. People running here, running there. They go to the other side of the lake. People turned up. Meetings, meetings, people. A peopled out day, right? So then they feed the 5,000. Okay, so um, you come down at a verse 30. They're in a deserted place. They feed the 5,000, 37, 38, 39, right down through 40, 41, 42. They all ate and were filled, verse 42 says, 43, they took up 12 baskets full of fragments and of the fish. Now, 45, Mark 6. Immediately, he, Jesus, made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side, to Bethsaida, while he sent the multitude away. And we had, when he had sent them away, he departed to the mountain to pray. So when Jesus had sent them away, he departed to the mountain to pray. Now, follow the story through. He came to the disciples in the fourth watch at the night. Is that 3 a.m., Chris? Fourth watch at the night, 3 a.m. in the morning? Something like that, I think it is. Something like that, I think it is. Yeah. But, but the point is, he went into the mountains for several hours. So, okay, we've got a peopled out day. Ministry, ministry, ministry. Demands, demands, demands. And Jesus turned aside. Come on, somebody. Jesus turned aside to go in on the mountains on his own, to be with the Father, to pray. And you know what happened? The next day, great miracles happened the next day. Great miracles. We know of the woman that touched the hem of Jesus' garment, Mark 5. But you know, this following day, people in a whole lot of villages was touching his garments and being healed, just like that woman. Great miracles happened the very next day because Jesus turned aside to be with the Father. You see what I'm saying? He turned aside. Yeah. Now, 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 please, 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 please. Jesus didn't say to the guys, okay, get rid of the crowd, get rid of the crowd. Somebody make me a coffee. Oh, my, 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 I need a coffee. Give me a coffee. I'm going to lay back and put my feet up. Guys, we have had such a peopled out day to day. Let's watch a movie. Let's just chill out and watch a movie. We have been so done with people. today. don't want to see any more people. Let's just chill out together and watch a movie. Need some downtime here. Give me a coffee, two coffees. Make it strong. Now, somebody seen Peter's laptop? I want to see if I can beat his score. <laughs> Grab me Peter's iPad. I want to see if I can beat his score. Well, nobody's around here. 
I, 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 listen, I'm not against that stuff, but what I do know is folks get it out of balance. Yeah. Seriously out of balance. Yeah. And then come to the pastor and say, I don't have time. No. Oh, come on. I don't have time. Well, let's put a clock on that little phone of yours and see how many hours a week you clock up on that baby. <laughs> so Jesus turned aside. Comes back the next day. Notable miracles. What an example. Yeah. Amen. Now, um, for, 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 for my wife and I, um, I'm from a farming background. Um, I was a shepherd, um, New Zealand uh, farming background, farming culture. I was not brought up in a city. Cities were like a foreign country to me. Um, farming background, I was a, a shepherd, I was a sheep shearer, and I was also a rodeo cowboy for nine seasons in New Zealand. So um, our life was majorly interrupted. I thought that was our future, but we're like that donkey. I mean, come on, we were like that donkey. We're heading in a certain direction and we are, our life is interrupted and we are turned aside. Now we're out right out here in another field. So it's like a foreign country to us. So we went to Rama Bible Training Centre in Perth in 1982. Had to leave our country, had to leave family, had to leave everything. Now listen, Rama Bible Training Centre to us was a burning bush. It was a burning bush. I shudder to think where I'd be today if we had not turned aside. I can tell you some things. I wouldn't be married to my wife today if we hadn't turned aside. I wouldn't be in ministry today if we hadn't turned aside. I wouldn't have had the experiences that I've had if we hadn't turned aside. To us it was a burning bush, but we had to turn aside. You hear I was in a um, pastor's conference with the Rama Churches Network in the early 90s. And we had Pastor Bob Nichols there and Pastor Fred Brothers in this pastor's conference in the early 90s. And um, it was towards the end of the year, uh, hundreds of people there. And I felt like when Pastor Fred Brothers was ministering that there was just me and him in the crowd, just me and him there. It was very much a God season and a God time in my life, the Holy Ghost flowing through him, what he had been going through, what he had been walking through, what he was seeking God for, we just connected um, in the spirit. Powerful time in my life. Now, I knew it, I recognised it. So what did I do? I got the audio cassettes before CDs, guys, and MP3s and all that sort of stuff. I got the audio cassettes, I bought them before I left, took them home with me. We did the Christmas thing with the family and everything and then after Christmas in the new year, I took time aside. I got those audio cassettes and I turned aside and went into a time of fasting and prayer with those audio cassettes. By the time I had now, in a time of fasting and prayer, listened to all those audio cassettes again, allowed God to plough my heart and I ploughed my own heart before the Lord, I came out of that time changed. I will never be the same. In fact, I could stand here right now and I could preach to you what that brother spoke on. I could turn you to the same scriptures. I could come to the same points that he spoke on. He was ministering on finding your purpose. He was very much seeking his own purpose. My, 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 it was a powerful time. So how come that impacted me so much? Because I turned aside. You hear? Now, when the Lord saw that Moses turned aside, the Lord said. Now, when the Lord saw that Colin turned aside, the Lord said, and the Lord did. Are you hear? Yes. See, it's just a little course correction. Who's, who's married here? Okay, so we've got a good percentage of people married. Some of you are not sure, like, should I put my <laughs> hand up or not? Help me, Jesus, if you're married, you should know. Right? Listen. 
I promise you, married folks, listen, you will not go to bed tonight basking in marital bliss and wake up in the morning on the rocks. I promise you that will not happen. How will you run up on the rocks? By ignoring the little course corrections in your marital journey that you should make but don't. And you wake up and look out the window one morning and you're surrounded by icebergs because you got off course in your marriage because you didn't make the little course corrections. Am I right? Absolutely the truth. You've got to make the little course adjustments, the little course correction, because if you don't, you wake up and you find, up, find out, who is this woman? She's thinking, who is this man? How did this happen to us? You follow what I'm saying? Yeah. Because we didn't make the little course correct. This is just the same. Our life as believers, our life as men and women of God is just the same. We've got to make the little course corrections before we wake up in the morning and we're surrounded by icebergs, we're up on the rocks, we've got to come to the pastors, we've got to come to the pastoral team, pastor, we need prayer, we are shipwrecked. Well, make the corrections along the way. You hear what I'm saying? Yes. Practical wisdom. Hallelujah. Now, um, we're 2014, right? We are in New Zealand, just checking here. <laughs> 2014. <laughs> 2013 will be just the same as this, was, was just the same as this year will be, 2012. I promise you, I promise you, as a man of God, I promise you this year, like last year, like 2012, like 2011, but this year, you will have burning bush moments. Should I say burning bush opportunities? If you're a believer, your heart is after God, you're a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ this year, the day is still to run, you will have burning bush opportunities. You will. I will, you will. The only thing that might differentiate between us is which one of us will turn aside. There'll be burning bush moments, there'll be burning bush opportunities that God orchestrates and brings our way and brings across our path. But we have to turn aside. The donkey had to turn aside. We'll have to interrupt our normal schedule, our normal program of demands and everything. Now, I'm not talking about doing anything weird, okay? And, you know, flying off to some remote country and leaving your family not knowing where you are. I'm not talking about doing anything weird, okay? Come back to earth, all right? Don't do anything weird but you'll have to turn aside from self. I, me, and isn't it, isn't it interesting our world, you know? Um, um, we have our iPhones, our iPads, our iPods, and we can hook up into iCloud. It's all about I, I, I. So to turn aside, you'll have to slap I and get I down <laughs> and turn aside To the Lord. But I promise you, the opportunities will be there. Yes. Burning bush moments are ahead of you. Burning bush opportunities are coming. That's God. But will you turn aside? That's the issue. Amen? I've had them in my life. I've just... just um, narrated to you a couple from my life. Rhema Bible Training Centre for my wife and I was a burning bush. It was a major drama for us country kids at the time to turn aside and go live in Perth. You, you, look, sympathise with me, please. <laughs> I'm a, I'm a, my trade was sheep farming Shearer, musterer, stockman. I go to live in Perth. How am I going to find a job? 
I applied for a job painting rubbish bins. Can you believe that? Painting rubbish bins. I didn't get it because they didn't think I was qualified. <laughs> painting rubbish bins. Hello? What's the big deal about painting rubbish bins? I'd never used a sandblaster before. I'd never done that sort of stuff before. So I'm applying for like this, th these type of jobs. I can't get a job because I've got no qualifications. Bring me a hundred sheep to shear. Bring me some horses to shoe, you know. Bring me a horse to break in. You know, I'm, I'm like, like a duck out of water. <laughs> Funnily enough, the job I finally got was as a milkman. <laughs> <laughs> I got a job as a milkman. So I used to milk cows too, so I got a job delivering milk. But, but you know, it was like to turn aside, we're talking about 1981. I'm in the, in the best job I've ever had. I walked away from it. The call of God, yeah. turn aside to my burning bush. The example I gave you of that pastor's conference. I didn't have to get all those tapes. I didn't have to go through all that stuff again. I could have said, yeah, I heard that before. Yeah, we heard that before. Heard that. Yeah, I was in, I was in those meetings too, Alan. Were you there? Yeah, I was there too. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. Never marked my heart. I turned aside and it marked my heart. That's my word. Is that all right? Sunday morning? You've got to turn aside. Every one of you, my brother, my sister, I promise you, there will come burning bush opportunities. There will come burning bush moments for you. But you have to turn aside. I've had to. You've had to. What are we talking about? Little course, little course corrections? Little course adjustments. Don't wait till you're on the rocks. Make the adjustment today. Amen? How about we stand up? Thank you, Lord. 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 Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, let's just lift our hands before the Lord, if you would. Thank you for listening so well and being such a good bunch to preach to. I've um, simply given you what was on my heart. I know it's simple. I know it's the ABCs. But hey, it'll always be useful in your life. You look to be 120 like Moses, it'll always be, it'll always be useful in your life. It will always apply. I will never outgrow this message. Never. Till I get to eternity. I'll never outgrow this word. I'll always need to take time to turn aside. So will you. It'll always apply. It'll always be fresh manna. Always be fresh bread. Always be a rhema from God every day. Just the same. It'll not change, my brother, my sister. It'll not change. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Just where you stand, how about you just lift your voice and thank the Lord this morning. Just where you stand, come on, lift your voice. Let Him hear your voice, hallelujah. The fruit of our lips, the fruit of our lips, the Bible says, the fruit of our lips. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. The fruit of our lips, hallelujah. Father, we magnify you. Father, we glorify you. Father, we exalt you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Bless the Lord, bless the Lord, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Now somebody's here this morning, I think, Pastor Colin, I know exactly what you're talking about. I know exactly what you mean. But you're wondering, you're pondering. I hear the Spirit of the Lord. Give me that word, you're pondering, you're wondering. I know, I know. Dear Lord, I know I should have turned aside. I missed it and I know it. I should have turned aside. And more than once, the Spirit of the Lord says that more than once. And you like push God aside. You like put God on hold. 
You're asking me, you're wondering, you're pondering in your heart, can I still get there? Can I still make it? The Spirit of the Lord says, yes, you can. His mercy is new every morning. Hallelujah. All it takes is for you to turn aside. Samuel, young boy Samuel, he didn't get it the first time, largely because of the denseness of the spiritual prophet that he reported to. They didn't get it the second time either, but he surely got it the third. And you can too. God will come again. God will breathe on that again. God will speak to that again. That burning bush opportunity will appear again. This time say yes. This time don't push it away. This time say yes. And you'll find God is very quick and very speedy. When the Lord sees that you turn aside, the Lord will say and the Lord will do. And Father, we breathe on that, breathe on that by your Spirit again, which folks have pushed aside and put off. Breathe on it again by your Spirit, Father. We call to it, we call it forth. And the days are here. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Now, Pastor Chris, if there's anything you want me to do, I'm submitted to you. But I want to say this to you, that within five years, what you originally thought and what you originally had in your heart when you first started out. Five years, it's gonna be so different, you'll hardly recognize it. I think you're already a measure of the way there now from what you originally thought X number of years when you started, what you originally pictured, what you originally saw. Within five years, it's gonna be so different. You know, with your background, you've always had a heart for the nations. And I see that God's gonna expand that. You'll feel at times like your heart's going to burst, but it's God. It'll be God. We want to be a part of it. Yeah. So I'll hand back to you. Great. This is this is a moment of course correction. The, the message is that, but don't miss the. We can look at that and say, what a great message about course correction and miss actually making the adjustment, <laughs> miss actually the turning aside. And so let's just continue in the, in the presence of the Lord for a moment and make that determination right now by faith. You might say, well, I, 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 know, I know God's speaking, but I, I just, I'm just not hearing exactly what that course correction is. Take it by faith. In the name of Jesus, let's say this together. By faith, I believe, I receive the correction necessary to get on course with the perfect will of God in Jesus' name. Now, there might be somebody here today, because I don't know every single one of you here today. There might be someone here today and and the, the, the adjustment that's necessary in your life is that you've never, you've never met Jesus personally. Well, honestly, this, this is the most significant course adjustment you could ever make. The, the, the do, heading towards hell and now adjusting towards and being a part of heaven, that's the biggest course adjustment they could ever make. So if, if there's anybody here today, I, I, I was encouraged by Carly's testimony yesterday. We just, he just shared this with me as he was leaving. And uh, he went to a house, he was delivering some packages and normally they're told, you know, only uh, you're only supposed to stay there three minutes. Is that correct, Carly? Three minutes. So he's waiting three minutes, five minutes. And, and you know, ordinarily you get about your day. This is his business. He's got to get about his day. He's got to get about. But something, something grabbed his attention. It was a burning bush moment. Something grabbed. And, and the Lord said to him, just wait, just wait, just wait. Now, how easy would it be just to get on with the day because you've got other packages to deliver? We well, said, no, just hang on there for a little bit. And how long was it, Carly? It was quite a, quite a long time, at least five minutes or so. And then eventually this lady came down, got down to the, the door, and she was sick and all sorts of stuff going on in her life. And so Carly, being the man of God he is, he's delivering a package, the courier for the Australia Post. He said, can I, can I pray for you? <laughs> Prayed for this woman. You know, she didn't, she didn't know God. 
He's praying for her. Well, he went about his business after that. How long was it between that? A week? Two weeks later, he came to have to deliver another package to that same lady. She ran down within a couple of minutes. She's down the door. Oh, I've been so good since you prayed for me. And so, am I, is this correct? What happened? He, he could have gone about his business, but he, he just listened. He was, he was listening in that moment. Because God said, hang on a second. I know your normal course of duty would be just to wait two, three minutes and then go. But just, would you just wait? That's a, that's a course adjustment in his day right there. And someone got blessed by heaven in that moment. We, we've got to listen. You know, Jesus said, he who has is to hear. He wasn't expecting that half a dozen people in his congregation that day didn't have any ears. <laughs> he wasn't talking about the external. But sometimes you've got to have the ears to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. And that's, that's the course adjustment we're making this week. Let's make the determination to be doers of the Word, not hearers only. To do the Word of God that's in our lives now. It, that's, it's been imparted to you. That Word's been imparted to you. So you may be standing here today, sitting here today, and you've never met Jesus. This is the biggest course adjustment you could ever make. So I'm going to get you guys to do the work of an evangelist. I want you to turn to your people on your right and on your left, if you brought someone today, and I want you to simply ask them this question. Do you know Jesus? Have you met Him? Do you know? Come on, do the work of an evangelist. Get used to doing this. It's a simple question. Do you know my Jesus? Do you know my Jesus? And if there was a hesitancy, if someone said they didn't look like they knew or they said no, just ask them straight out, would you like to know Him today? Would you make to, like to make that course adjustment in your life? Would you like to do that? So we're going to pray a prayer today together, all together. Even if you've prayed this prayer before in your life, we're going to encourage those that maybe want to make this prayer for the first time. Let's say this, Heavenly Father, I come in line right now with your will for my life. I believe that Jesus lived, that he died, and that he rose again. I now take the lordship of my own life off myself, and I put the lordship of my life upon Jesus. Jesus, you are my Lord. You're the captain of my ship. You're the one who steers the way. And I respond to you. I go your way. And I submit myself to your perfect will. Holy Spirit, I submit my life to you. Fill me. Help me. Comfort me. Lead me and guide me. In Jesus' name. Praise God. Now, if you prayed that prayer for the first time, I want you to, uh, at the end of the service, as we close out, I want you to come and see me. If you brought someone that made that decision, just take them by the hand, Brent, come down the front, and we just want to pray with you some more. We've got some things that will help you get started in that new course. And the rest of you, I, I trust, because I know you, that you're making those decisions even now. That you, you've, you've got the spiritual wherewithal to listen to the Lord. <laughs> I was just reminded of Jeremy Pearson's uh, something he said one time. He said, you know, you can go, you, you, there's a church service one Sunday night and you decide to stay home and watch the movie instead. You know? He said this, and I thought this was interesting. He said, God had something planned to say to you that night. He'll say it whether you're there or not. Because he's faithful to it. Do you hear what I'm saying? He'll still move ahead with his plan, even if you decided not to be not to be there to listen to it, because he's faithful to give it anyway. And we know he's faithful to give us second chances and third chances. But how much better just to get it the first time round without having to go around the mountain again, come back to the same point? So I know you guys. There's a, there's spiritual maturity in this room, and I believe you've taken a hold of that word and you're you're making the course adjustments that are necessary. Bless the Lord. Should we just sing that? Yeah. You've been playing it long enough. <laughs>